My name is Amanda Ring, and this is Flight of the Feminine. Here on Flight of the Feminine, I'm inviting you to explore and reclaim all things feminine, the divine and the dark, to awaken your womb and heart consciousness. I'm inviting you to open to the realms of energy and spirit, to evoke empowerment and create sovereignty as a sacred soul each one of you are on this journey through life. Welcome back to Flight of the Feminine. And today, I have a very special guest joining us. And a big welcome to Dr. Karen Ward, who is sharing with us all the way from Dublin, Ireland. So I'll take a moment to tell you a bit about Karen, provide a little lead into the theme of the episode, why women gather, and why I invited her to join us here on Flight of the Feminine. Then I'll open things up for Karen and I to share anything that she wants to share extra, and we'll dive into the questions and the musings of this episode. Dr. Karen Ward is a writer, a lecturer, teacher, and a psychotherapist based in Dublin, Ireland. She has trained in the Celtic lineage and Druidic traditions and co-founded and runs Sri Ankroy and she'll correct my enunciation there, I'm sure, um, of the School of Irish Celtic Shamanism with her husband, John Cantwell. Her renowned Moon Manah Women's Celtic Circles brings the wisdom of the Irish goddesses' archetypal energies to those whose hearts sing with Celtic soul. Karen is the author of Goddesses of Ireland, Ancient Wisdom for Modern Women, and a children's book called Glorious Goddesses of Ancient Ireland. She is also the author of the bestseller Secrets of Ageless Aging and the annual Moon Mina Diary or Journal. She's co-editor of Soul's Seers, an Irish anthology of Celtic shamanism, and most recently has released Bridget, Celtic Goddess and Matron State of Ireland, Oracle Card Deck. So you may now fully appreciate why I'm so thrilled to have her on the show today. I am currently a member of the Moon Mana Celtic Women's Circle Facilitator Training. I have one module left to complete my trainings. I'm so excited. Very excited about that. And uh, through my time with Moon Mana in the facilitator training, Karen and I discovered we are both Capricorns. So it's our birthday season, (laughs) and I so resonate with her ambitious nature and devotion to the goddess. I discovered her and Moon Mana a few years ago as I was delving more into my own Celtic ancestry and the women's work and shamanic aspects of my own offerings in Seven Feathers. Really and truly, my Celtic soul heard her sacred call through the ethernet and the internet as I began to seek further connection with the pantheon of Celtic and particularly Irish goddesses. As I continue to explore the ancient Celtic feminine wisdom ways, both personally and professionally, Karen was one of the first women that came to my heart to invite on to Flight of the Feminine to share about the importance of women gathering together. Our ancestors cross-culturally lived and engaged with life in a more ceremonial and sacred way. They were more deeply connected to nature, the cycles within all of life, earthly, astrologically, and cosmically. In my experience as both a woman and a facilitator of women's personal healing journeys, I witness how women feel this truth deep in their bones and their wombs. And there's often this profound remembrance beyond the mind when women gather. 
So let's see what Karen has to share about all of this with us today. Karen, you are so welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much, Amanda. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you and all your listeners. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Is there something else that you might like to share about um, the introduction for you today on the episode or anything else that you'd want to share before we sort of jump in? Oh, well, I'm here blushing slightly with the glowing tribute that you've given me. (laughs) And I do want to add how special it has been to work with you over the last while with the Moon Manaw Circle Facilitators course. I remember many moons ago when you applied knowing, ah, Amanda, whoa, the women that will sit with you both in person and online are truly in safe hands. And Mm -hmm. I really heard in your beautiful evocative words how your connection And your yearning, if I may use that expression, for deeper connection with the wisdom of Ireland and indeed the archetypal energy of the Irish goddesses was so strong and powerful. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And even as you're speaking about it, I'm getting what I call my spirit bumps. They're just running. (laughs) Uh, Just hearing your voice just evokes the connection. I just feel Bridget like right away. And I know how deeply connected you are to her uh, specifically. It's been both a delight and it's been a key for me, um, a literal spiritual and alchemical key to be part of the Moon Mana experience and training. It's opened up so much for me and it just felt like a coming home. Uh, so I, I just thank you for that. And I'm going to ask you to share a little bit about that as we as we go along. Um, so, yeah, it's a wonderful to connect, um, which feels like through not only the training, but having you here today as women re-enter the tapestry of weaving with one another. There's these familiarities with one another that words can't explain. You know, it's energetic, it's from the heart, it's from the womb, and it's such a a beautiful gift. And I feel that with you. And I felt that with you the minute I discovered you and your work. Let's let's dive in a little bit more about that magic. Uh, and I know that you have an experience as both a, a shamanic guide and practitioner, as well as a psychotherapist, which also resonated with me. I have a background as an occupational therapist, Um, so I come from that clinical background as well. However, I've been drawn to the esoteric and the spiritual work like my whole life since I was a child and just didn't know, uh, didn't have the language for what I was experiencing then and very shamanic and animistic connection with life. So in your varied experience as a wise guide and resource for women, Why do you feel that gathering in circle or ceremony is essential for the modern woman? I think this is a very wise topic. I think this is a very wise topic in the sense, Amanda, that modern women are seeking something that has, shall we say, not been part of our remit consciously. Way back in the mists of time, our ancestral foremothers gathered for the physical, the childcare, the washing of clothes, the cooking of food, the tending the fire. But they also came together for what we would refer as the mental and emotional. There was support systems there for the ups and downs of life. And if someone experienced a death or a birth, the women came together to be there for each other. And then we take it to the energetic and the spiritual. And for me, energy is a currency of spirituality, the esoteric, the metaphysical. And this was 
inextricably woven into everyday life. However, in our modern world, we have come further and further away from that. Mm -hmm. And there was a very key time, particularly in, in Europe, where there was a conscious shift where healing went healing was was separated shall we say the curative went down the medicinal route and the theology or the 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 metaphysical ways and understandings went down the religious route and therefore there was a gap in the middle right the healing ways the community ways and here in Ireland, because we're a small island, there's been a very interesting phenomenon where for many, many years we were predominantly a Catholic country and church and state were very intertwined in an in unhealthy way. And that in the last 30 years has come away from that intertwining. And a lot of people began to seek, and particularly women, but what has happened was there's a recognition of the gap, that spiritual yearning. And therefore, women's circles, particularly with the esoteric, particularly looking into these archetypal energies, the wisdom of the land, have become very popular because there is a remembrance and a recognition. It, it's literally woven into our DNA. It's who we are. Mm -hmm. And the first time I sat in a women's circle, the word that so came to my heart was home. Yeah. At home. I yes. know this. Mm. And that's what is such a joy to see that in the eyes of the women. The mm -hmm. delight. Of, oh, yes, I'm home. Yeah. I, I so resonate again. My spirit bumps are just running. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's... Um... It's, it is, it's a, it's so deeply embedded in our, our, not only our DNA, but this aspect of our psyche, our soul remembrance. It, it really feels like we sit with our ancestors the minute we're in circle. At, at least that's been, uh, you know, my own experience. And I fully agree. And as I've been, before I connected with you and your work, I had been running events and some gatherings and had created something called the Wise Women's Circle. And we were following the chakras and had the themes and starting to explore the mental, emotional themes that are part of that. And um, it was just incredible to see how women started to open and reconnect with themselves and they were discovering as they showed up why like <laughs> what is it that I'm missing you know that there it was their heart or their soul that called them forward really and you know the mental body would say oh yeah well this is you know about confidence or self-esteem and I could certainly have some help there but there was always this other layer that started to get unveiled in the circles. And um, from a, a therapeutic perspective, I wonder if you wouldn't mind sharing from your experience how you see women grow and change and transform by being part of gatherings for circles. And usually in circle, there's some sort of ritual or ceremony happening. So like how, how over the years, because you've been running the Moon Manoff for quite a number of years now, and maybe you can share that as well. Like, what what do you see change in the women when they start showing up in circle? The Moon Manor has been running since 2009. Okay. And it was very much what I would say was a spiritual calling. Another term people often use is a vocation. Mm -hmm. And there was an element of why me? Am I worthy? Really? And it was the most natural and heartfelt calling. And I did wonder, as many women do who come to circles, is this excluding men? Why women? Where are the men folk? Why not everyone? Mm -hmm. And I discovered that when women gather, 
it's taken as a given that the men are gathering somewhere else. That much as I love my dear husband, it's not appropriate and he doesn't want to sit with women talking about breasts and wombs and childcare and breastfeeding. And I respect Mm -hmm. him completely, but I don't want to sit with men talking about men's stuff. But I do honour what they're doing. I expect them to respect and honour what we're doing. And then, and this is the crucial point, we all gather together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the world that we live in is a better place because of it. Because for me, women and men, we're equal but different. Yes. Or whatever you express or identify yourself as. As, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So... Classically, a woman might come to a circle, a Munmanah circle. There might be the curious. They perhaps practice yoga or meditation, mindfulness. They've dipped their toe in, the proverbial toe, mm-hmm. in a little bit, the holistic ways. And oh, yeah, yeah. And I felt very safe. I felt, oh my gosh, I could open up. And then they come out of the curiosity. So that, that's one. Yeah. There's a second group who are, as we gently say, well off first base. They're they're living uh, on an earth based spirituality path, mm-hmm. and they recognise perhaps I need to know more about my ancestral ways. Perhaps they have Irish heritage or Celtic heritage, or they might say, I want to know more about the pantheon of Irish Celtic goddesses. And then there's a third group, which you alluded to already, and they go, I have no idea why I'm here, but I know I need to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so within, within the three, there is that beautiful unfolding of, it's like a rose opening her petals. There is a, I feel safe. This is a place of confidentiality. It's a place of respect, unconditional love. Mm-hmm. Here I can be me. Yeah. Nobody expects me to be anybody. In fact, when we introduce ourselves at what we call talking full woman, in some traditions that would be talking stick, we we say our first name and we say perhaps where we're from. And then we speak about, for example, it's Misha Kareen. I am Karen, daughter of Del, granddaughter of Kathleen and Marjorie. And we talk about our lineage, but I don't say, oh, hey, everybody, I'm a psychotherapist or I'm a writer or um, this is where I live or because it's not relevant. Mm-hmm. I am coming into circle as I am today. And maybe I was a little bit sad or maybe I'm a bit stressed or maybe I'm having an ecstatic experience. This is who I am. And I don't need to bring my past with me. And I don't need to bring future projections with me. Mm -hmm. Take me as I am. Mm -hmm. And I think that is very therapeutic for many women. Oh, absolutely. There's a a look in their eye. Oh my, this is, oh, I can be me, as I said before. And then, of course, particularly in the Moonwindal circles, as you mentioned, there are rites and ceremonies so therefore, there is an awakening of what already lies within. And this is crucial. We're not, as facilitators, we're not putting something on somebody. Mm-hmm. We are merely there to be a, in service, to help each woman awaken what already lies within her. It's interesting, um, you, you shared at the start, I'm a psychotherapist, but this is not therapy. Nope. A, a woman's circle is not about therapy. No, no. We don't have to be. We are merely there to hold yeah. sacred space mm-hmm. and allow the unfolding to happen. Yes. It's like a a portal. It's a sacred container. And actually, I have something I want to read here in just a moment that's actually uh, a little description of circle itself. And um, I think it's really re- relevant because it it does encapsulate I feel the essence of the feminine principle. And even though we're talking about, you know, women, men, and as you said, like across all genders, 
um, however one identifies, there's, there is still within our psyche a feminine principle, a masculine principle, and this is reflective in nature itself, this, the balance of, of all the elements. And I'm going to ask you to speak about shamanism here in a moment, but what I'm hearing you saying is that when women gather like this in circle, um, regardless of what the circle is for. It could be a writing circle. It could be um, it could be to honor a specific Irish goddess. It could be for any any number of reasons or themes, but it offers women safety. There's an inherent safety. Of course, that also lends to how it's being facilitated, but there is a remembrance of the sanctity of circle. This this safety that comes with women coming together as equals. And um, that is where that, yes, there may be someone facilitating like you or I. And so we have a role of guidance and upholding that safety and encouraging learning and all of that. However, it's there's no pedestal. It is we we are part of that energy and that that circle. So I'm hearing safety is a big experience that women have, which I can't see a greater fuel for growth than feeling safe. And the second thing you were saying was about, to me, is authenticity. Women can show up as they are in that moment, no matter their accolades, no matter their relationship status, no matter their age, no matter their race, no matter their religious affiliations. It's like they can just show up as they are. And that stepping into authenticity can be a huge transformational gateway for, for us as humans, but specifically as we're talking about women, because of all of the masks and the roles that we try to uphold, especially the modern woman who's perhaps conflicted with all of the potential that's out there for her to achieve, but also trying to find where she wants to be on the path of life and um, that some of those masks and things can drop away. And there's a vulnerability there um, that many people aren't used to, that we haven't, it hasn't been cultivated for us to feel safe, to be real about our frustrations or our pain or our insecurities. And so that what I'm hearing is safety, vulnerability, authenticity. And then I feel in my experience, and I know from doing the training with you and how you hold space, that it helps women connect with, like you said, what's already inside. And that is the the portal or the gateway to their their own knowing their intuition their self-esteem their sense of self-worth that they start to remember that when all these other things start to drop away that first of all I'm not alone in feeling this way <laughs> that other women feel this way and that there's so many so much resource within me that I didn't even see so it helps build a sense of resilience. And I just, I see women, I can see how their bodies change, their posture changes, their openness gradually changes as well as they return to the circle. And they actually can also drop a bit of that, what I feel is a bit of patriarchal influence of like having an expectation of it going a certain way that they can show up and open to the unknown and the organicness of it, even if there is an intention. And um, so, yeah, that's really, really beautiful. Um, just, as you said, the safety, the authenticity, and that allowing the opening to being vulnerable and being who they are in the moment. Yeah. Is and there... that's the beauty of the horizontal tradition. And if you think about it, Amanda, the majority, in fact, I would nearly dare to say all of the indigenous traditions and think of the Native American on Turtle Island, the Celtic. There are so many very simple practices that we could certainly do in our modern world. I mean, the principle of the talking stick 
Yes. When you hold a stick, you have the floor. No interruptions. Nobody can butt in. This is the floor mm-hmm. for you. But also, everybody's sitting equal. Nobody is above or below. The children, the elders, sit equally. Yes. They have a place at the table. The wisdom of the elders, the wisdom of the young. But I particularly like the tradition which really has could have a huge place in our modern world where the tribe sit once a month, everyone, and they share. So what's up with you, Amanda? How are you doing? And you might share X, Y, Z. And when it comes to me, perhaps I've had a really difficult challenge and everybody listens to me and then the stick goes on. But if three months go by and I've brought up the same issue and I haven't done anything about it, with the greatest of respect, the tribe will bow. In other words, we hear you. And then they will turn their backs on me. In other words, what's going on in your life that you have not asked for help or support or actioned something or worked through or released or whatever it needed to be? Now, that might sound very harsh, but there has been, uh, how would you say, in our modern world, there's a lot of wallowing going on where we something mm-hmm. is up and we we don't know where to go for the answer, which more than likely lies within. But yeah. we <laughs> might not understand that there is support in community. And that's why we gather. And I particularly feel very excited. And I still get that nervous excitement when I hold a circle. I have no idea who's coming in the door. I could be sitting in circle with a medical doctor. I could be sitting in circle with a woman who's had a miscarriage. I could be sitting in circle with a woman who has been in prison. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. And I love the the inclusivity and the equality that we bring. But also, every woman deserves her place in this circle. Yeah. And together, let us see. In other words, your sharing might inspire me. My sharing might inspire Melissa, mm-hmm. who's my share, Laura, and so on. Because... Uh, we we might discover, oh my gosh, this is the worst possible scenario. I've no way out of this. But when I hear another woman share, I go, wow, maybe I could try that. Or, yeah. well, if she can do that, then why can't I? Mm-hmm. Or if she can take the time to self-care, to recognize that she is worthy of time to herself, well, maybe I can do that too. Mm-hmm. And this is what I love about the the energy of, the energy we create in circle that truly has to be experienced. If if anyone is listening to us and going, oh, that sounds interesting. I really advocate, find your local circle. Come and sit with Amanda online. Come and sit with me online if you want, but experience it. Yeah. It is truly magical, powerful, and yet so, so simple. I fully agree. And whether it's on retreat or in a, a set circle per, in person or virtually, everything that you're sharing is like, it's the gold, it's the treasure of being in the circle. And the the first thing, that I'll go back to the, the previous statement you made about like when we're sharing and if we're coming back to the same circle and we see that we're sharing the same situation or dealing with the situation in the same way or that what I'm hearing is uh, self-accountability and self-responsibility. And in the type of um, energy that you're describing in the circle with the talking full woman or the talking stick, that we get to hear ourselves without somebody coming in and giving advice or giving an opinion or trying to rescue out of their own perhaps discomfort of what they're hearing, that the intention is for each woman or each person to speak their truth in the moment or what they think is their truth, which may not be, but that's what in the moment is coming. And they're being witnessed as opposed to a problem to fix. It's I'm witnessing you where you are. I respect you. I accept you with whatever it is that you're sharing in this moment. And 
to me, there's this inherent um, gesture of acceptance and support and acknowledgement that that person, there's the person isn't broken. You know, so many people come with this concept that, you know, I'm doing life wrong or I've, I've, I've messed up or there's something wrong with me. Um, I can't seem to get beyond this issue or this way of thinking or this type of relationship. And instead, when that, that uh, talking full woman gets passed around, they're, they get to actually hear their own description of what's going on. And then it gets passed on. And each person is just acknowledging and witnessing. And I find sometimes that, and like you said, how powerful that can be, that sometimes that in and of itself, I've had women say, I just really heard what I said. And that actually isn't true, (laughs) you know, or (laughs) it's like, I actually don't feel that way, but I feel like I should feel that way. And then it's like, oh, here's a level of awareness. There's some programming going on there that. It's so even that alone is like, wow, just to have that space and to have some guidance. Um, and I think uh, like I also resonate with what you're saying around a lot of people don't know where to go and um, or that there's help available or that they actually have answers inside because we've been so taught in this patriarchal paradigm to look outside for all the answers um, that that pause to go, oh, wait a minute, I don't have to do this alone. And the matriarchal way is to not do it alone, is to have an individual experience, but to have support and um, that invitation to practice asking for it and practice being able to, to tune into what is it you actually need. That all comes from that, that very simple act of giving space to each person just to speak from where they're at. And it sometimes can take practice for people to actually show up authentically because they they have, and I know I felt this at different times and women will share like, I was so nervous, I don't know what to say. And so they they grasp something they think is acceptable or appropriate or will be, you know, uh, favored in a certain way rather than like, I am so mad about this and I feel so disgusted with myself around, blah, 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 whatever it is. Like eventually that can come and that that permission, oh, it's huge. It's huge. And that's what I hear. And when you say power and the magic of it, it, it does really open up like that rose. It helps women open up. We often say, look, with Talking Full Woman, We're not looking for the wise and the witty. Don't in your head work out what you're going to say. Listen to the other women. And when you hold this beautiful talking full woman in your hand, then drop from your head to your heart and see what your heart wants to say. Mm, But equally, look each woman in the eye. Don't speak down to the floor or up to the sky because then you've lost touch with the room. You've lost touch with the other women. And that's when we go into the loop of story, the story yeah. you've told. So, hello, I'm Melissa. I'm a divorcee. Hello, mm. I'm I'm uh, Linda. Um, I'm just recently married. Hello, I'm whatever. Mm-hmm, Do you mm-hmm. know, we, we bring our stories, our baggage with us. Yeah. Let's not label ourselves. Let's simply be in the moment And that's, as you have said, very therapeutic. And it gives the other women permission to be who they are. And and as you say, it's it's so exciting. I I often think of in June, we offer the mother rights of Danu. And Danu is very symbolic. She's the mother, she's the mother goddess of the Tua de Danon. And I remember one woman came to Circle and she yearned to be a mother, a birth mother. And she she was a little bit older, maybe she was about 37 or so, a very aware of the biological clock. And she and her partner, who happened to be male, they had passed the three year of being together. So there was everybody was asking them, oh, 
are you getting married? Are mm-hmm. you going to buy a house? Are you going mm-hmm. to live together? And anyway, long story short, she got pregnant and she had the baby. And this was her biggest dream. Amanda, everything fell apart because she was trying to be a mother to a new baby, a, a working mother with a very yes. high powered job. Yeah. Hello. The weight she was before she got pregnant, uh, be a superhero mother yep. and woman. Mm-hmm. And she couldn't do it all. So she was really, everything was falling apart. And then she came to the circle. And she couldn't believe it. Women were saying, but listen, <laughs> you can be Wonder Woman some of the time, but you can't be Wonder Woman all of the time. Mm-hmm. Focus on your baby. Hey, forget about yeah. your weight. It'll happen when it happens. Look, take time off work. Pick projects that suit. Maybe you can work at home some of the time. Look for the support. Maybe there's the the mm-hmm. we, the La Leche League can help you with the breastfeeding. The other mothers can come yeah. yoga and mothers for mother and babies. Yes, connect with was, other mothers. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I thought I had to do it all. And they're going, not at all. Listen, this is why we have the rights, the maiden rights, the mother rights, the crone rights. This is why we celebrate our sexuality because these are different key phases in a woman's life. That's right. And there are beautiful traditions and ceremonies and rituals around them. So we don't do them all at the same time. We do them and celebrate them one by one. And don't try and figure it all out yourself. Mm -hmm. Look to your elders. Look at the crones in circle. What do they do? What do they know and they can share? That's and right. Equally, you look back at the younger women coming up and share with them. And this is so nourishing, nurturing. And it's how that archetypal energy comes forward because Danu, she is there to be, to help us. And for me, as a non birth mother this lifetime, anyway, I really found it so empowering to recognize, yes, I too was a mother, but I mothered, say, Moonmana. I mothered my books. I mothered the teaching, the courses. Mm -hmm. There's so much more. I mother my my godchildren, my nieces and nephews. Yes. And that was an eye opener. And I'm very happy to say that I, I can share that with other women. Yes. So that that is for everyone. Mm-hmm. It's very exciting and and a real um it's a very a very potent time for me and very healing. Yeah. It's so important for well for everyone, but for women who are gathering to realize that there's no one way that is the right way. There is what is what is aligned and supportive and Danu's energy being that mothering, nurturing, stable um, energy is inviting even mothers who are mothering, whatever they're mothering, whether it's a child, a project, that that mothering includes themselves. And that other women in circle sharing their different experiences by caring and nurturing something into life can help other women have ideas and step out of the story and be like, oh my God, I never thought of that. (laughs) Or, oh my goddess, I never thought of this. (laughs) You know, like that didn't occur to me because I've just been so stuck in my story and the same way of approaching everything in life. And I love working with archetypes as I know you do. Because it helps us step into this um, other view of of the same situation. It helps us take on a persona or a character and be like, well, if I embodied this characteristic of Danu or Goddess Boan or or Brigid, and I was her, how might I explore this situation or how might I deal with this challenge? How can I evoke that up within me? Because it's all there. The potential for it's all there. But sometimes we don't have a bridge to connect to it. And that's why I love the archetypal energies of the Irish goddesses and um, 
working with it and the the themes that you've created and the rights and so many women have not had the opportunity or the great um the great heart connection to these different rights that we've these rites of passage in our lives are just glazed over now. Our first bleed, our first sexual experience, our, you know, our coming through the different moon phases of our life, you know, and our cycles, when our ancestors very much would have gathered in celebration and also in support of the questions, of the confusion, of the fears. <laughs> and um, you've so beautifully rebirthed this for women. And I've, I've offered the rights for the maiden, the mother, and the crone got my spirit bumps again. I have my stones on my altar. And the experiences the women have had, even when they've they've come in with the, th the thought perhaps that um, they were going to deal with uh, reinventing or reconnecting to their role as a mother. And what they actually discovered was some healing in how they were mothered and the generational mothering. And that that's the organic nature of the circle and opening the heart and getting out of the head and all of that being so healing. And we're so in need of that and having life be sacred in these ways. Again, these big events in our lives um, don't have the reverence that they used to in community. Things would pause for life would pause for these things. You were about to say something. Well, yeah. it, exactly. And like the Celtic festivals, there's eight Celtic festivals in the year. And they were a time, it's said that the community spent three weeks looking forward. Oh, gosh, Bealton is coming up oh, early summer. And they'd, they'd maybe look to what produce they were going to bring to sell. They'd have their clothes ready. Mm -hmm. There'd be a sacred preparation for the rice or whatever. Then they would celebrate for three days and then they would go back home and spend three weeks talking about, oh, do you remember so-and-so did this and we did that and da-da-da, yeah. all the insights. And then you'd move to look forward to the next one. So there was a progression, but there was a rhythm to it. Mm -hmm. And nowadays we get so much stimulus. Whoa. And what I love about the Irish goddesses is, yes, they're powerful. Yes, there's healing. But there's an edginess. I, I think perhaps I'm thinking of the Morrigan. I mean, she is the goddess of death. She's the goddess of rebirth. And she would be analogous to Kali mm -hmm. of the East, uh, Kali the Destroyer. But her gift to us is, to us is, look, you've got to release. You can't keep amassing all of the stuff yeah. You've got to release and let go. You are not a teenager anymore. You are not in that relationship anymore. You are not somebody's mm -hmm. little girl anymore. Let it go. Move mm -hmm. on. And then we we move to say, oh, Sheila a gig. Ha -ha. Oh, yeah. The Irish goddess <laughs> of sexuality. Mm -hmm. Well, I am amazed how modern women are still afraid of the, the powerful potency of their sexuality. Oh, I know. Yeah. I mean, you think holistic, physical, mental, emotional, mind, body, soul. Hello. What about our sexuality? Exactly. Whoa, I the know. passion, the enthusiasm, the, oh, the eroticism. Is, yeah. Yes. The, the ecstasy. I mean, the ecstasy of life is meant to be this opening experience. And I can't think of any other energy that is as awakening as sensuality and sexuality and the energies of that. I love the Sheila and the cake. And oh, it was a right. Oh, I love them so I much. Know. I really and, do. And in my circle, I had uh, women in their 20s and women in their 70s. It was brilliant. And they just embraced it wholeheartedly. A lot of these archetypes and the connection to the ancient wisdom is, is also about reclamation. It's about sovereignty. And it's about allowing ourselves to mature parts of ourselves that have gotten stuck, as you said, like amassing all these stories and not being able to let go. And there's also a time like when the crone or even the mother energy says, 
wake up, let's go. Like <laughs> that loving, direct, blunt, like, I don't give a crap who thinks what about me, this is important to me, and this is what I'm going to do. And that sense of self-permission and sovereignty comes also with the reclamation of your sexual identity, your sexual nature, because it's it's so expansive. It can't not enliven, enliven you. So um, I know that we could talk again and again, because I would love to hear more about the the goddesses themselves. And I think we've touched on why these archetypes are so important. But I, as you know, as well, of course, that these are energies, these are ent energetic entities that are alive, and we can feel them in the land, we can feel them in the stories. And as you as a bard and a storyteller, um, you emit their energies too, so beautifully. Um, that that's, I feel like we could have a, a show just on the different goddesses themselves and and also just very very briefly if you don't mind there may be people listening to the show that are very new to the idea of shamanism or or maybe the celtic shamanism is new to them if you wouldn't mind just sharing a, a brief description of um explanation of what shamanism is i I know, but I would love for you to share with our listeners. Yeah. I would be delighted to. Thank you, Amanda. Um, the interesting thing is there is no such thing as Celtic shamanism in that it was there way before the Celts arrived. And the term shamanism is, I smile now as I say it, it's a little bit like a brand name uh -huh. in that the the Russian people called their Siberian neighbors. They saw the medicine men and women and they said, oh, what are they doing? And they gave them the name Saman, which means one who is on fire, one who has died many times and one who knows. And that became a term that describes medicine men and women all over the world mm -hmm. in any indigenous society. Um. It really is about holistic living, body, mind and soul. It brings the spirituality in. We're very familiar with the term holistic, but we often think of it more in the physical, mental and emotional than bringing the energetic and, and the shamanic. And it is understanding that each one of us are sacred and that the transpersonal divinity whether you call this spirit, God, goddess, source of love, source of life, whatever you refer to it is, is within you as well as you being part of all that is. Mm -hmm. And we take our, our cue very much from nature. It's, it's a nature-based path of spirituality and respect, equality, Diversity are all watchwords. And also there is very much a sense of personal accountability and responsibility. We know when we're doing something that's not right. Mm -hmm. And we equally know how to use that expression, follow our bliss. And therefore, there, there's no holy book. There's no priests and priestesses. There's, uh, it's, it's a horizontal tradition. Everybody right. sits equal. However, some people turn up. I heard the calling to be in a leadership role, right. but as a facilitator, as a host, not as um, somebody who's higher up the, the, the scale, so to speak. Yeah. So I love the fact that there's it's very organic and it has been around since the year dot. It's been mm -hmm. there for millennia ever since. Our ancient ancestors buried their beloveds, surrounded by rose petals, with their dog, with their their um, beautiful nature acorns or whatever it might yeah. be, recognizing the sanctity of life and an afterlife, an otherworldly aspect. Mm -hmm. That that's a a little nutshell. I but know. It's, uh, it gives you a hint. And, and, and finally, I would say that 
every tradition in the world, every every culture in the world has their version of this. But I think in the Celtic Isles, indeed anywhere, we're very much informed by the weather, that might surprise you, mm-hmm. but the land. And I think because we are a small island off the west coast of Europe that did not see world wars, that the Romans did not invade, we were sort of left to our own devices. So there's very... Um, earthy, pagan uh, wisdom held in the land Mm -hmm. that is there to be to be beautifully tapped into if you come of good heart from a place of unconditional love. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I I absolutely feel what you're saying that the lands are, they just, they, the energy just speaks of that that bridging of all the realms, right? There is a, a holiness there that isn't, and I don't mean that in the religious religious terminology, but a holiness and a sacredness and a, a oneness that you feel the elementals and you know of that connection with all the ancient sites to the star nations because they're, they're, it's just... Um, it just oozes <laughs> all that wisdom. And I hadn't thought about it from the perspective, though, of being untouched from world wars and other occupation and how that may have held this, um, held the knowledge and the wisdom and the energetics of the land differently. So that is, uh, yeah, that just that just struck me. I hadn't thought about it that way. So thanks for explaining it in that way. Um yeah, now we have we have had more than our fair share of we had civil wars, we had colonization, mm-hmm. we've had uh, abuse of women, abuse mm-hmm. of children. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we've had our fair share. But I think one of the reasons the Irish and the Celtic way is coming more powerfully to prominence is that as a people, we're finally recognizing our shadow. Mm. And we're waking up to past mistakes, past abuses. Mm -hmm. And I think we're maturing as a people. And that's really important because we're we're no saints, um, but we're not sinners either. We're we're looking at ourselves honestly. Right. But we're also recognizing that beautiful coming together of not just the humankind, but as you say, the fairy kind of she, the star, there's there's unseen energies at play in every land, but I think they are becoming more known and more accessible here at the moment. If you think about it, most people have heard the fable of the lost island of Atlantis, Mm -hmm. this great community, this island and legend and lore who had so much wisdom. And we are surrounded on three sides by the Atlantic Ocean. And we talk about High Brazil, this fabled island. And to me, there has to be a connection there. And it's almost like the energy from there is seeping up out of the land. It's resonating in the trees, in the, yeah, it's there Mm -hmm. to be experienced. But what I love is there is very much a sense that this wisdom, this connection is only there for those of good heart. Mm. That if you come from a place of greed or adversity or whatever. Manipulation or yeah, it's yeah, not available. ill intent. It's just yeah. not available. You'll be blocked. Uh, You'll be blocked. Yeah, yeah. completely. Mm-hmm. And that's so mm-hmm. exciting. So again, there the, you hear that the... the the, the the wisdom of a child, the the wonder of a child with the wisdom of an adult. That's really where we're coming from, that we hold that beautiful, bright, wide-eyed, <gasps> um, innocence, wonder mm-hmm. from the time we were children, playing with the fairies at the bottom of our granny's garden. But then we we weave into it 
the experience, the ups and downs of life. And of course, we've all had ups and downs in life. Nobody has a charmed mm-hmm. life. And if they tell you they have, they're either in denial or <laughs> they just happen to be going through a particularly good phase, which is yes, great. that's right. <laughs> but like, we've all had something. Yeah. And then when you marry the two together, just like when the 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 kings and the chieftains of old in Ireland, they had to marry the goddess, the land, and then there would be plenty, and then there would be yes. the that real um, the abundance. And of course, if there was a female leader, she had to marry the sky god. There had to be those male and female principles that you mentioned there at the start, the interweaving. Yes, but respect. Yes, and the unconditional love, and it's exciting that we humankind are are coming back to those mm-hmm. and the, the the seeking the no wonder shamanism is becoming yes a, a such resurgence and no wonder women come together yeah because of that grace and community and that the wisdom yeah yeah and uh, just to close on that I. What comes through so strongly is as part of shamanism and um, the gathering and the remembrance is the being in right relationship and being in balance, return of harmony and coherence with land and people, people with land and the divinity of life, not the life that gets created out there so much as the life that's already in here and in the land and that gathering helps also in a very felt and embodied way evoke that for women or whoever's gathering and if it's being led or facilitated in a way that includes uh, a shamanic uh, offering then it's helping build that bridge to reconnect and be in right relationship with the earth and all of her, her kin. And again, that reciprocity and equanimity between all living things. So I, like I said, I think we could talk and talk and talk and there'd be so much more I would love to have you share. So maybe a return visit to Flight of the Feminine. And I thank you so, so much for being with us today. Thank you for spending your evening with us because as we are recording I know that it is evening time for you in in uh, Dublin so I appreciate you taking your personal time to uh, share with us and for everyone that's listening um, of course everything that we've shared and referenced there'll be some resources for you in the show notes and just to capture the essence of what Karen and I have explored and shared with you today Um, having this focus on women, but not only women, we have gathered in sacred circle for thousands of years to learn, to share, to heal, to teach, to grieve together, to create together. And so many modern women are missing this deep connection, not only to their own feminine wisdom, but to community and community in safe and supportive ways. So much of the patriarchal influence in society has created this um, separation of women from themselves and from each other. There's even like a pitting and competition that's subtly in all of our social media and all of our our kind of uh, our guidance in the external world that has, I think, broken the sisterhood in a way. So there is really is this return to creating um, safe and uh, a sanctified sisterhood again. Um, yeah, so I see these ancient feminine ways being woven anew in the world of women now. And I thank you for being a gateway for women to do that, myself included. So thank you for your time, Karen, for your openness and sharing with all of us on Flight of the Feminine. A big, big thank you to our listeners. And be sure to join me for the next episode, The Worthiness Trap, (laughs) which will be a juicy one. Episodes drop every second Friday. So please mark your calendars. Please follow and share. Check out the show notes. I will be including anything we've referenced 
connections for Karen and all her offerings, my website, and of course, other links to Seven Feathers. And these resources are for you, for your own journey. It's time, my sisters, to elevate your mind, expand your feminine heart, explore your inner wisdom. Let's soar together. Sending you all big, big love. This is Story Studio Network.